Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another Assassin's Creed video. This time we're talking about Assassin's Creed Empire, and with lots of recent speculatory videos that's been going around, including me myself have done, but also discussions on the Kilcona Club and things like that, I wanted to talk about, well, what exactly do I want? from the next Assassin's Creed game that looks to be Empire, set in Egypt. So this video is a top 10 things I'd like to see in Assassin's Creed Empire, ranging from gameplay to story and all that sort of stuff. So it's going to be a really good time, I think, and I'm really excited to do this video, and I've been thinking a lot about, well, what other things I really want to see if I was to, if I was to get to, let's say, put the game together in my head, my dream next Assassin's Creed game in a way that is based in Egypt. So coming in at number 10 is a new combat system. Look, I'm going to be honest, the combat in Assassin's Creed, it's, n it's never been bad, but it's also never been great. It's always just kind of, yeah, it's all right. Look, I enjoyed Assassin's Creed 1's combat, and I liked kind of where it went with the Ezio trilogy, but it wasn't something that could universally work with other characters. And when you went to Connor, look, I liked 3's combat as well in, in a way, and how it went to 4, but it's, it's always just kind of been average. I thought Unity kind of took a step in the right direction, but they didn't nail it just because the game didn't run it that well. And Syndicate's was just abysmal and ridiculous and just over exaggerated and I hated it. It's never been at a really high standard so in general I think it needs to be totally revamped. Uh, I think you could even go back to Assassin's Creed 1's to start and have a base and then kind of develop it from there. I'm not saying just put Assassin's Creed 1's combat because it's very primitive at this point but at least kind of let's look back at the old games and how would it progress in this day and age, how would you make a similar combat system now? And maybe that could be a way you go. But I definitely think they need to look at new ways to do it and go maybe, in, in a sense, also the way Unity tried to. Try to go a little more realistic, but again, it's a video game, so let's have some fun with it. It doesn't have to be too ridiculously realistic like Unity's was. At number 9, it is armor and customization. Now, I definitely think we need to be looking back at the old games. And I think armor and customization is something in video games, in all video games really, that are action, adventure, and role playing. Uh, that when you upgrade things, when you get new armor, when you get better customized outfits, things like that, it makes you feel like you're progressing as a character. Now, character progression comes in storyline, but it also comes in gameplay, and that can be from abilities you gain in combat, and that can come from how you look as a character, whether you're more menacing, uh, better equipped, things like that. That's so important to character progression, and the Ezio trilogy nailed it. You had your set robes, and you got better armor as you went through, and then there was this kind of ultimate armor set, like the Altair robes in Assassin's Creed 2. Now, I think, again, it shouldn't be the same as it, but look at that and then build from there. Don't just change things completely like they did with future games because I don't like that in Syndicate and Unity, you just have to change the way you look completely as an assassin with your robes. I like that there's iconic robes. I've talked to James about this a lot on the Kill Connor Club. I like the set iconic robes and you can build from there. I do like though the way Unity in a sense, if you go on a smaller scale, Let's look at Arno's, uh, you had your beginner robes and then you had like tailored robes and master robes. I wouldn't mind if you can progress your robes and add things to it, whether it be your wrist blades or the way your cape or robes kind of look and they just look like a bit more of an upgraded version of your previous ones. Not too different, but at least a progression and then add in armor and add in your different types of weapons and things like that. And I think that'd be something you need to look at for the future. At number 8, I would like to see the Precursor Box Theory. Now, if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the description for my latest Assassin's Creed The Truth episode where I talked about the Precursor Box and how I think it could affect Assassin's Creed Empire in Egypt. So, I've got to put on the list, it's a, I love the box and I hate it all at the same time, or the boxes, or whatever you want to call it. And I'd like to see whether the theory is true or something to do with it. In Empire, I'd like to see an origin story to the box and how the Egyptians maybe created the box or used the box and how it affected them. So, because it's my theory, yeah, I definitely want to see it in the game. 
At number 7, Assassin's Tombs Returning. Now, I did a video on this already last week talking about why I think these missions should be back. And now people said in the comments things like, but if it's the origin story of the Assassins, which of course we don't know whether it is, that's pure speculation. But let's just say it is the origin story of Assassins. They're like, how would there be Assassin Tombs? Look, you're not understanding me. I'm not saying Assassin Tombs, like the tombs are of Assassins. It's a mission type. It doesn't have to have anything to do with assassins, it's just those style of missions of interior parkouring where you get to explore and get rewards at the end, whether it be money, whether it be specific armor pieces or weapons from those missions, or it progresses and you collect some reward at the end for doing all of them, perhaps. That's what I mean by having those missions come back, because they're so much fun, so awesome, and again, I got a video on it that I made last week, so if you want to learn more about how I think it could be implemented in Empire, go to that. But I'd like to see those sort of tomb raids return in Empire, and I think Egypt's a great setting to have those return. At number six, it is a seamless open world, and that's between cities. Now, I think having Egypt, you've got a, lots of cities around, something like Alexandria and Cairo, but also having an open world desert with smaller villages and oases and certain landmarks and desert areas of course and cliff areas like there's a lot you could put in there environmentally into a space and with the black flag team and how they worked on black flag there's a lot they could do with that and you know put it into empire but do it certain differently because with black flag you know you had the loading streams between cities because they just weren't quite up with the technology to, to put it all together like that. Of course, you need the loading screen, plus it was on the 360 and the PS3, so there's just certain things you just had to do. They were limited to a certain level. So I think now you could have this huge open world and space, and on either end you could have a city or cities around that you can just go straight into. I think it's time for that, and it's a great progression. Technologically, we can do it, and I'd love to see that and have all the missions kind of in between. At number 5, I'd like to see the Brotherhood system return, for a lot of reasons. I mean, I think having your own assassin recruits uh, would be excellent, I always enjoyed it. Uh, I liked in Brotherhood and Revelations, there were, it was a bit too limited, I think, uh, because I always thought there wasn't quite enough customization in there for you guys, I didn't care enough about them, they were just kind of default things there. Sure, that was still cool, and I really liked Assassin's Creed 3 the way they did it, where you had personalities to each of these characters and they had different abilities. Now I think you could do something along the lines of not as really specific because I didn't like how you recruited them, it was a bit too dragged on. You know, you recruit them in a simple way and with each of those abilities you can equip them. So there's more deep customization so you make the characters your own, they don't necessarily come in with personalities. You recruit them and you give them the ability like they're a shooter and they play like similar, if you look at, again, Assassin's Creed 3, the way they did it, they had, you know, the shooter who had a certain ability, and then you had a guy that had an ability to disguise, and you walked in a crowd, and things like that. You could be able to customize them with those abilities or something different yourself, instead of them coming with that. So that might be a cool way to do it. At number four, it is Headquarters Building. Now, I don't like how it's been done recently. The cafe theater was okay. You know, but uh, Black Flags was also okay, but I like having base of operations. Monteregioni easily did it the best, you know. You had a village, a city, an area that was yours and you cared about it, and you not just built in it, but it made the whole thing look better. When you walked in, it was a dreary, depressing looking city. The more you customized it, the better everything looked in the city, the more people were around and things like that. I want to see, similar to that, you build your own more customizable locations for you to care about and want to build to help build up perhaps the assassins in a certain area of Egypt. At number three, it is systemic side missions in the world. Now, James and I, again, have talked about this on Kill Connor Club a lot, to have things like the para stories in Unity and how they just kind of fit into the world. There were certain ones that, like Napoleon missions that there was multiple of, so there was mini story arcs inside missions and some of them were just one-offs. So if you were to run around the cities or you were to run around the open world of the Egyptian desert, running into uh, missions and individual stories to put you in the world and immerse you with side missions are something I'd really like to see. Also, of course, I do like different storied side missions, like the Leonardo machinery missions in Brotherhood, or if there's multiplayer characters where you had those Templar hunts where you got to assassinate your multiplayer characters. Like, I like things like that in there. That's cool. 
but I want things that are systemic and fit into the world and affect the world as well, so that's something I'd really like to see in Empire. At number two, it's a third person modern day. Like, for fuck's sake, how are we so far removed from where we began with the modern day storyline in Assassin's Creed after Desmond and the way Desmond ended was a bit just sort of anticlimactic and so average and then from there it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. Like, I don't I don't need a s necessarily a third person modern day that has all this shit and all these missions you'd go around doing stuff. I don't need to play as the character for five hours in a game. Desmond had a good balance. I just want a character I can be like, okay, what's he want? What's his goals? Who's he involved with? Desmond's son, perhaps. That's what I would like to see. You know, and you and you jump in and out briefly just to learn more about this character and what the goals are in the modern day, and you have a perspective. You're not just some random person that's supposed to be us. Look, I don't want to be in Abstergo. I want to play as a character that's in Abstergo, you know, because I can't put myself there. I'm sitting on my fucking couch. You know what I mean? Like, I want a third-person character like Desmond's son. Bring him in, have his own story arc, have a progression, and have him have a role to play in the future games and with what's going on again doesn't have to be a whole lot of stuff in the game desmond did it well i thought in two and brotherhood you know you had a good amount of modern day in there and that's what you kind of need to bring back with your own character to learn more and progress the whole modern day story cycle forward over multiple games to feel like you're playing one after the other and their sequels not just individual spin-offs each game at number one it is starting a trilogy or at least multiple games with the same character. And I'm not just talking about the third person modern day. That needs to be there for multiple ancestors. I'm talking about our ancestor getting multiple games. Because we are getting a billion assassins every year that we're supposed to get invested in. And my biggest example is Jacob and Evie, who's two characters that when I played Syndicate, I thoroughly enjoyed. They were well-performed and fun, cool characters. I've already forgotten about them because I know that I'll never play as them again. I've got no real reason to be invested in them in the game because I knew while playing the game, this is the only game I'm going to have of them. Sure, I enjoyed it to a certain level, but when you know there's no not just end of game investment, but there's no future investment forward from there. It's hard to get super, like, just balls deep invested. Like with Ezio, as soon as Brotherhood got announced, I'm like, holy crap, it just made 2 way better. It made me want to replay it, so I'm like, okay, I need to play it again and again because I need to be reinvested and know exactly what's going on because I'm going to play as this character again. I need to remember everything. Like, having multiple games with the same ancestor gives you a reason for when you're playing it to not just be invested in that game story but also in that character overall and be like this guy's awesome where does he go from here what could he do after this what could be his next adventures as a character what could he do next where you saw Ezio's progression to you know the master of the order then mentor like you know what I mean like it's just amazing to see progression over multiple games you know, it's, it, I don't know why we've lost this. There's so many franchises that do this. Sure, you can have your spin-off games. Halo does their spin-off games, but Master Chief's the main character, at least. Got fucking Halo 5. And then you had Ezio for a time, which I loved, and they moved on at the perfect time. And I think, you, again, after maybe two, three games with the same ancestor, then you move on. I'm happy to go to another ancestor. But there needs to be a time where you can create a new star in the franchise, a new person to be invested in for a certain period and then move on when the time's right to another character and have multiple games with him maybe it's just two maybe it's three maybe it's four i don't know but it needs to be more than one there needs to be more investment in this overall and i think if you're starting in egypt in somewhat ancient times uh you know there's so many different locations you can go to with a character greece rome people have talked about this a lot in with other youtubers including myself on the kill connor club there needs to be an Ancestor Trilogy again. There needs to be multiple games with not just Modern Day, but your Ancestor, just to get us all way more invested. But guys, this is all speculation, and this is all my opinions, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on things you agree with me with. Some things on this list I've already done individual videos on, so go have a look at my channel, check those out. The box one will be a, a link for it in the description. But there's going to be parts to this that I'm going to do videos on that I haven't yet, like systemic side missions, headquarters buildings, brotherhood system returning, things like that. I will do videos on and talk about 
this week on the Kill Connor Club. So look forward to that and check that out because I'll be talking about all this sort of stuff and this video in particular with James. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see you all later.